Okay, in this video, I'd like to show you how to calculate the Fermi level, or we'll say the Fermi energy. So, what what is the Fermi energy first? So you can ignore what I've written up here. Okay, so if you can imagine the, the the states of electrons in a solid as increasing in energy like this. So, say energy is going upwards like this. These are all the states. Now we'll say this is the zeroth state, whatever it is. So, if we cool your atom down and you cool it and cool it and cool it, all the electrons will pack into the states down here. And you won't get any state. You won't get any states that are occupied up here. And we call the the highest occupied state at this at this time. We call that the Fermi energy. All right. Now, if you increase the energy of your solid, we now talk about a Fermi level. So what we can say is this: since all of your your electrons, when you cool it down, will all of them will be below the Fermi energy. We can say that if we integrate between zero and E Fermi of our density of, of um, states in energy space, we should get the total number of electrons. That's assuming, of course, that there's one electron per atom. Okay, so yeah, that, that, that should make sense. So in a previous video, I showed you how to get the density of states in scalar K space. And that we called rho of K. I'm going to sneeze now, so you can give me a moment. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. That's the density of states in scalar K space. And when we made the assumption that the density of states in scalar k space is equal to the density of states in energy space, like that. And because of that, we were able to get these two expressions, which are just the same thing written in two different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this expression, um, integrate this expression, we'll say dE, of course, to get uh, n. So let's go ahead and do that. So I can say that n is equal to the integral from 0 to the Fermi energy of... Uh, of what? V, which is the volume, okay, over pi squared h bar cubed times 2m cubed rooted times root e integrated dE. Alright, so we know that all of this here is a constant, it, well, I should, all of this here is a constant, so we can bring that outside the integral. And I'm not even going to look at our constants from now on. So we can say that n is equal to our constants integrated, and then we have our integral, excuse me, from 0 to e Fermi of e to the one half dE. E to the one half dE is equal to two is equal to um well you remember you raise the power by one and then you divide by the raised power. So this is going to become three over two and when you divide by the raised power it becomes that. Alright and this is going to be integrated between zero and e Fermi and we're going to have to multiply by our constants and equal that to n. Alright so what do we get here? Well, of course, when you have zero, that's not going to matter. So what we get is twice, well, say two-thirds, e Fermi to the three over two. And then we get a constant. So let's plug in our constant to get v over pi squared h bar cubed is equal to, uh, oh wait, and we have, excuse me, root 2m cubed. I forgot about that. That's equal to n. All right. And you can rearrange this then to get our Fermi level, or e, our Fermi energy. So ef is equal to v over uh, pi squared h bar cubed oh I take that back I'm looking at the wrong segment of my notes okay you get you get the following you get h bar squared over 2m and you get then 3 pi squared n over the volume all to 2 over 3 that's what we call the Fermi energy all right and of course, we can extend this to be on the Fermi level when we increase the temperature of our solid. So, I hope that was uh, useful. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.